right, day number three is here, and Jess has been, I don't know if you know this, but Jess and I go way back. Jess reached out to me and was like, hey, will you do some poker coaching with me? That was a long time ago. And now we're at the point where I'm saying, should I ask Jess for poker coaching? Because he keeps winning and put money in his wallet, and I'm just lighting money on fire. So, Jess, what, how did your session go yesterday? Uh, it went great. Uh, I played 2-5 with a $500 cap, uh, which is an upgrade for me. Um, and uh, started with 500 and cashed out at uh, 1088. So he's killing it. Meanwhile, I'm I'm just throwing money away at the PLO table, and then I'm calling when the guy is 37 for the straight. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, day number three is here. We're gonna go play some more cash first. We're gonna grab some lunch. We'll see where the day takes us. We got at least one tournament in the in the schedule, so we'll figure that out too. Let's go. All right, just regged for the one o'clock daily, which I'm pretty excited about. Gonna get some tournament play in. But before we do that, get some caffeine. So we're heading to Starbucks over here real quick, grab some coffee, get the system right, and then we'll get in there and uh, hopefully run up a stack. Would love to uh, win a tournament, at least cash. It'd be great. Been a long time since I played a tournament, even longer since I cashed one. So let's see if we can uh, put up some results. Done with the first four levels was uh, sitting in a pretty good spot, up about uh, let's see, up about 9k on the stack, 25,000 to start. Ran a bluff that I think I ran into it, sitting back even right now. So hopefully we can do some work, get some more hands. We're definitely not card dead. Won a hand with Jack High at one point, so can't complain. We're not running terribly, but uh, hopefully we run a little bit better um, and those bluffs get through. Let's get back in there. A little bit later in the tournament, I have eight, nine suited and I raise it up. I get jammed on by a short stack. I'm gonna make the call here. Here's the run out. So while playing the tournament, I didn't film every hand. What I decided to do was just be really present and then film the all ins. Two hands that really mattered that I didn't get to film because it wasn't a big jam right away. You know, we kind of maneuvered a lot. But here's where it went. Uh, one of them was, I have pocket aces. The, I raise, I get a caller in the big blind. We go to a flop of eight, eight deuce. And his body language says, I'm interested in this flop. I thought, let me see how this plays out. I don't need to go for three streets here. I'm probably not getting three streets. And if he has an eight, he's got me. I'm gonna check behind. I'll go for two streets of value. So I check behind, the turn is another deuce. So now it's eight, eight, deuce, deuce. I'm holding aces and he bets. I thought I'm gonna call here. I think he's gonna check a lot of rivers. I've underrep my hand, I'll bet I should be able to get value on the, on the river. So I decided to go ahead and make the call, give him a chance to hang himself if he's feeling kind of frisky. River is an ace. Okay, so this just got interesting. He checks to me now. So it's not, it's not an eight, right? He shouldn't have an eight here. And I'm like, how can I get value? <laughs> Cause I don't think if he's not willing to like put a bet out there, he doesn't have a big hand at all. So we're probably not getting paid. I'm probably not getting called by much. Like maybe if he has like pocket fours or something and I put out like a small bet for like two big blinds on the river here, maybe he just can't get away and he decides to call. I, I think that'd be fine. Let me go extremely small. So what I do is I put out a 20% pot bet and I get the result I wanted. He goes for the raise. I end up re-raising, he thinks forever and it says, you know, you're a genius if you're bluffing and folds. All right, and then after that hand, we get pocket kings, uh, which, hey, we're running good at this point. So we get pocket kings, uh, I raise it up, I get a collar behind me, we go to a flop with two spades and a king and I lead out. I get raised, I re-raise, it's not, I can't quite, the stacks are a little too deep to get it all in right there in that spot. After, after he calls the raise, we have like a 0.5 SPR. So now it's pretty easy to just get the rest of the chips in. And so the turn is actually not great. It's, it's a spade, but there's no way I'm going away at this point, right? I'm hoping he had a set. I'm hoping he had two pair on the flop. So I, I put it in, he's like, I'm calling a bet with the king here. I'm not gonna fold with so few chips left and so much in the pot, right? So 
I, I just put the money in out of position. He makes the call. He shows me that he's got the spades. So I had the best of it. He now has the best of it, but the river bails us out. It pairs the board. We fill up and now we scoop a ton of chips. So some interesting hands there that really made a difference. Break number two, we're heading into level nine. Average stack, 45,000. They say you gotta run good in a tournament to do well. Well, we run good a couple of times in some spots where we were not a favorite and we came out ahead. Now sitting on 94,000. So we have double, more than double the average stack. That feels great. Going into nine, hopefully we can continue that run good. Let's go. Here's that 94K stack. Things feeling pretty good coming back from the break. But then we spend over two levels with just no hands, no spots. If I had a chance to steal, like on the button, I had nine deuce offsuit. I mean, just stuff that was not allowing us to accumulate chips. We end up chipping down for a while and that's okay. We're gonna be patient. We don't need to go super aggressive. Let's wait, we have time to pick some spots. Now we have about 16 big blinds. Open up, get a call or get jammed on. We're gonna call, here's the run out. I just barely covered, so we're still alive. And now we get to this hand where we have just over two big blinds. I'm gonna jam it all in with an ace. Let's see if we can hold. Oh, yeah, yeah. still in there. <laughs> I now have five big blinds. I get moved to another table. There is a raise. I've got a suited ace. I rip it and I get called. <laughs> Fairly disappointed to be that close to the cash and then to bust, but hey, a part of me is ecstatic because now I get to go play PLO. Let's take a walk down to the Aria. Sit down at 1-2 PLO at the Aria. And guys, I wanna thank you first of all for all the comments, all the feedback. You guys had a lot of good stuff to say. It was reiterated over and over again. Hey, if you don't have the nuts on at least one board playing double board bomb pots, don't put the money in. Well, I have a trash hand, but I flopped the nuts on one board. I definitely don't have the other board, but we end up piling it in. I have a draw to the uh, flush, but it's a, it's a baby flush if I hit it. And uh, my opponent ends up hitting a higher flush he takes one board, I take the other, but just wanted to say thanks for all that feedback. As the night goes on, we uh, turn this hand into a straight, we turn this hand into a straight, and on the final board here, we hit the nut flush and uh, end up going for two straights. On the river, the board pairs, I probably should have gone for some thin value when he checked to me, just because I don't think he's gonna be the player to check with a full house. I think he would have gone for the lead. So I probably should have been willing to bet and possibly fold but I'm a little shell-shocked from all the losing in PLO, so I just checked behind <laughs> like a coward. And then uh, it was one in the morning, I realized I'm probably not thinking that well. I'm uh, If I'm not willing to put in a value bet here and I'm not thinking it through well enough, it's probably time to go. So that's what I did, I wrapped it up, booked a nice win, finally booked a win, it took three days, <laughs> but we got a nice win of $429, and uh, that's a wrap. Well, that's a wrap on day number three. Day number four coming up, I got some feedback from you guys that you would still like more tournaments even after this one. And I gotta tell you, I'm not sure what's on the schedule. I'm gonna go look at the dailies, kind of see what's available. But man, when I'm playing PLO with the Aria last night, I was having so much fun. It's the most fun I've had on this trip. I'm definitely going back there. I'm just not sure for how long. We'll see what the tournament schedule's like and uh, what we can get into. If there's a good event, I will play it for you guys. If I can't find a great event, I'm probably gonna be back at the Aria playing some more PLO because it is so much fun. I feel like a kid in a candy store over there just hanging out and playing a game that I've been working on for quite a while now and uh, actually getting like a bunch of reps and getting to feel comfortable in it. I'm having a lot of fun, really enjoying it. And I, it's that, oh, that old feeling of like when poker, when I was first getting into poker and I just couldn't stop playing, I just wanted to be at the table all the time. That's how I feel with PLO, so. 
I'm definitely playing that, I'm just not sure how much. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go see if I can reg a Peel Lobe Tournament. I don't know if that's available. But if that's available, I will definitely do that. If it's not, I'll see what's available and see what I can do for you guys in day four. That's it for this one, lots more coming tomorrow. Talk to you then. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this and you're up for helping the channel out, like it and sub it below. I'll see you for the next one.